In this video, I'd like to talk about the basic concept of recursion and recursive functions. Recursion provides elegant solutions to certain problems, but in order to understand recursion, we need to understand what happens when we make function calls. So let's take a look at this example. Here I have the main function, and the main function makes a function call to f1, and f1 makes a call to a third function, f2. Now to support these uh, function calls, we have the runtime stack, the runtime stack is this region of memory where local variables and parameters are allocated. Now, as soon as we get into the main function, something called a stack frame for the function main is created. Now, local variables and parameters for the main function are allocated in this stack frame. Now, execution continues until we hit this function call. As soon as we hit this function call, control jumps to function f1 and a stack frame for f1 is created automatically. So within this stack frame, local variables and parameters to f1 are allocated. Execution continues until we hit the, this function call. Again, as soon as we hit this function call, control jumps to function f2 and a stack frame for f2 is created. Now, function f2 executes, and as soon as function 2 uh, returns, at this point, uh, control jumps back to the statement that follows this function call, and the stack frame for function 2 is just removed. Same thing happens for f1. As soon as f1 returns, control jumps back to the statement that follows the uh, function call, and the stack frame for F1 is removed. Again, all of this happens automatically. We don't, we don't need to do this ourselves. It happens automatically. And again, as soon as the main function returns, the stack frame that is associated with the main function is removed from the stack. Now, with recursive functions, the same mechanism holds except that the function calls itself. The function doesn't necessarily call another function, it calls itself. Now to explain these functions, I'm going to use two classical examples, the factorial and the Fibonacci series. So let's start with the factorial. The factorial of an integer number n is defined as n times n minus one times n minus two all the way to one. Factorial of one is just one. Now I could define this formula recursively if I just notice that this part of the formula is nothing but n minus one factorial. So the recursive version of this formula is just n factorial equals n times n minus one factorial. And again, factorial of one is just one. So this is usually called the recursive case, and this is called the base case. Now, obviously, a recursive function needs to have a recursive case, and it needs to have at least one or more base cases, one or more recursive cases, one or more uh, base cases. And, you know, this is going to end up you know, with a function calling itself. So we need to make sure that the function, every call to a function brings us closer to the base case. So let's see how we are going to be coding this for the factorial uh, function. So here I have the factorial function. It accepts an integer, returns an integer, obviously, because the multiplication of an integer is just an integer. And we're making a function call to this function from within main with the uh, argument five. So first, we would like to check for the base case. So if the number that was passed to us, n, if this is smaller than or equals to one, 
then we do not need to make any more calculations. We just go ahead and return the value one. So this is the base case. Now, if the base case is not hit, that means the number that was passed to us is greater than or equal, uh, greater than one actually, then uh, we're going to return n times, so factorial of n is going to be n times factorial of n minus one. But how do I calculate factorial of n minus one? Well, I have a function that is going to be calculating the factorial. So I could just go ahead and call this function again, but now I'm going to be passing n minus one, n minus one as a, uh, an argument. So once n minus one calculates, we're going to get the value and multiply it by n and return it to the caller. Now we're going to be tracing this function in a second, but let's just go ahead and compile it and run it just to verify that it actually produces the value uh, of factorial of five. Factorial of five is just 120. So let's just go ahead and compile it and make sure that it produces the correct value. Main, and then let's just run this and it does indeed produce the value 120. So let's just go ahead and trace it, you know, tracing it, you know, making it absolutely clear. So let's just go ahead and trace this function. So this is our function. And the first call that is coming from the main is going to create a stack frame. So this is a stack frame. And the argument is going to be five. Now five is not less than one. So the base case is not hit. So we're going to be here. So we're going to be returning, I'll just write ret, return five times. Well, in order to calculate n minus one, I need to make another function call. And that other function call is going to create another stack frame, except that now I have the argument that is passed, which is four. Now this one is not done yet because it has not returned. It just made another function call. So when n is equal to four, we're going to execute the same exact code from the beginning, but with n is equal to four. Now four is less than one, no. So we're gonna hit this case. So that is again going to be return four times um, factorial of four minus one, which is three. So this is again going to create another function call, but now with the uh, argument three. So three is less than one, no. So we're gonna hit the uh, recursive case once more. So this is going to be three times factorial of two. So that's going to create another function call. Now the argument that is passed to this function call is two. So two is less than or equal to one, no. So this is going to hit the recursive case one more time. So this is going to be two times uh, factorial of one. So factorial of one is going to create another function call, right? Now the argument is going to be just one. So now one is less than or equal to one. That's correct. So we're not going to hit the recursive case this time. This time we're going to hit the uh, base case. So what we have here is just, we're going to be returning. So this is going to be return one. Now let's trace the way back with a different color. So let's have a blue. So this is going to return one to this place. And this function has completed and it's, you know, the stack frame is just going to be removed. Now this function can calculate. So two times one, the result is just two. So this is going to return the value two. And this function has completed and the stack frame here is just thrown away. So now three times two, that is six. This is going to return six to the caller, which is this function. And the stack frame here is going to be thrown away. So now four times six, this is going to return 24. And this stack frame is going to be thrown away. Now this is going to calculate 120 and returns to the caller. And the caller in this case, the caller of this function is just the main. So it's going to return 120 to the main and this function call is going to be thrown away. So this is the mechanism by which this function is going to operate and produce the result of 120. Now let's take a look at another example, Fibonacci series. 
Fibonacci series start with the number one and one as well. And then from that point on, every number is going to be the sum of the previous two. So the uh, this is the first Fibonacci number. This is the second Fibonacci number. Now the third Fibonacci number is the sum of the two. So one plus one, that is two. The fourth Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two. So that's two plus one is three. The uh, fifth Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two, which is three plus two, that is five. And then five plus three, that is eight and so on. Now, as you can see, this, uh, uh, the, the basically the Fibonacci of N, so Fibonacci of N is naturally defined in a recursive fashion. Fibonacci of N is just the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci of N minus one plus Fibonacci of N minus two. And when are we going to stop? So this is the recursive case. Now the base case, we're going to stop if we are hitting Fibonacci of one, which is one, or Fibonacci of two, which is again one. So these are the recursive case, so recursive. And this, these are the base cases. So let's just go ahead and code this function. So once again, I'll define a function called Fibonacci. And this function accepts an integer n. All right. And uh, the first, let's just hit the base case. So the base case fn that is passed to us, if this is smaller than or equals to 2, then uh, we know what the Fibonacci number for that. It, it has to be either 1 or 2. The Fibonacci number for this is just 1. So this is the base case. Otherwise, we're going to return Fibonacci of, so the previous Fibonacci number. So if we're having n, we're going to return the previous Fibonacci number, which is n minus 1, okay, plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. So this is basically the Fibonacci uh, function. And once again, we're going to be tracing this, uh, but let's just first uh, run it and see that it actually produces what we expect. So let's just find Fibonacci uh, number, Fibonacci of five, which is the fifth Fibonacci number. So let's just go ahead, compile it and run it once more. And the fifth Fibonacci number is just five indeed. So this is one, two, three, four, five. The fifth Fibonacci number is indeed five. So let's see how this function works. So main is going to call this function with the argument five in this example. And I'm just going to draw small circles here because I need the space. So this is going to be called with five. And within this function, five is not less than or equal to two. So this is going to make two function calls, one with four, for this one and one with three for this one. And when they return, the result is going to be added. But this function is also going to make two function calls, one with three and one with two. And when they come back, when the result come back, they're going to be added. Same thing for this one, it's going to do uh, function calls for two and for one. And when the result comes back, they're going to be added. This one in turn is going to call uh, another function call with two, right? Because it, you know, with three, it doesn't hit the base case. So we're gonna make a function call with for two and a function call for one. And when the result is back, uh, the result is going to be added. Same thing for two, but two actually hits the base case. So no more function calls. So this one is going to return so this one is going to return and let me just again choose a different color for that. So, well, let's first start from here. So when this function uh, uh, call happens, two is less than or equal to two, it's actually equal to two. So this one is going to return one here 
And same thing for this one is going to return one. The result is going to be two and two is going to be returned to this function. Now two is going to hit the base case. So it's going to return the value one. And obviously these stack frames are all going to be gone once we, once they return, right? And two plus one, that is three. And this one is going to return three to this one. Now for this one, it's going to return one here because it's hitting the base case. So every time we have two or one, we're hitting the base case. So we're going to return one. Same thing for this one, it's going to return one. Now one plus one, that's going to return three, uh, two. So two is going to be returned here. And, and once again, all of these are gone. Once, we, once they return, they're gone. So three plus two, this is going to be five and it's going to return to the main function five. And this one is gonna be thrown away. The result is five. Now this is the basics of uh, recursion and recursion tends to be a bit of a difficult concept for beginners. The only way for this concept to sink in is to see many, many examples. And that's what I'm gonna do in the next video. I'm gonna discuss a few more examples. Until then, see you.